At least it's not snow, right? So today's an edit day. Um, I'm going to be at the computer for pretty much the entire day editing. Um, but right now I'm gonna just get out of the house a little bit, run to the bank, grab some food, and just kind of get some fresh air because I've been inside for like probably a day straight now editing. But currently I'm working on a fairly large project. It's for a local CrossFit gym. And it's comprised of about 450 gigabytes worth of footage over the course of like, I'm gonna say four different shoots that we did for this. Um, so it's a lot and I think what I'm gonna do today is just kind of show you guys how I sift through all of it and kind of make sense of it and organize it that way when I start to kind of puzzle piece my final project together um, it's easy to find things um, that's probably the least obvious part I think of editing is how you keep like such a substantial amount of media organized and available to you at like you know a few clicks so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it this isn't anything that I invented I'm sure a lot of people use this especially if you're a Premiere Pro user I do not know if you can do this in Final Cut Pro 10 I've never used Final Cut Pro except for a very short period of time in college um, so I can't really speak for that part of it but it really helps keep me organized and it helps me move through my projects a lot faster so I hope it'll help you and uh, yeah let's get to it all right guys well we are back in the studio and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I go about sorting through all this footage and everything and how I build these timelines to make editing the final project a little bit faster so let's get into it okay so we are going to open up Premiere Pro here. I actually already have it open, so. Oh, that is Jared from Wesley CrossFit. Awesome guy. So we are going to basically be explaining to you guys today how to do this. And basically what this right here is, is my selects timeline. Um, if you notice up at the top here, we have labels um, for exactly what this footage is, what camera it came from, um, and what date it was taken. And that kind of, that trend just continues throughout all of these different clips here. Um, so if we zoom in just a little bit and just take a look at some of the stuff that we have here, these are individual clips that came from the camera where I'm using or cutting away what's good in the clip that I can actually bring into my final project and use for the final product. So this stuff is pretty important. And the reason that we do it this way, and I'm gonna be kind of quick about this because I just basically wanna show you guys how to do this part of it because this just keeps you a lot more organized and it keeps your workflow a lot cleaner. So basically what we're gonna do here, I actually have a few clips left over that I can demonstrate this for you with. So if we go over to here, I'm just gonna take my playhead and I'm just gonna drag it over to wherever, here's fine. I just don't want it to be touching this footage here because this is from a different camera than what we're gonna be focusing on now. So if we go into, let's see, I think it's this folder. No, let's see, where did it go? Yep, this is it, okay. So during, or I'm sorry, after the interviews that we did with the Wesley CrossFit, there was a barbell workout for their barbell club and I needed a little bit of B-roll um, of these guys working out to match this young lady right here who actually gave a testimonial. So, oh, sorry, that's not the most flattering. <laughs> Hopefully you won't see this. However, so what we're gonna do here is I'm just going to select the clips that I wish to cut from. So we're just going through the B-roll right now. So what I'm gonna do is right here is my first clip that wasn't part of the testimonials. Um, I'm gonna hold shift, go all the way down to the bottom and click. So now all of this is selected. Now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to click in open in source monitor. Okay, so now everything is in our source monitor. Now, before I go any further, there's a few things that you're gonna need to know. Um, 
in my Premiere Pro, I have changed a few of my keyboard shortcuts here. Um, right here, my Y and my U, I use these as my source clip previous and then source clip next. That way, when I'm actually going through my footage here, um, let's see here. I'll actually just cancel out of that. When I'm going through my footage, I can press U to go to my next clip, whatever that clip may be. Okay, so that's basically what that does. Um, other than that, the only other two keyword shortcuts that I have that are a little bit different than the standard are Shift Z and Shift X. Now, this is the reason that I do this. Um, if I actually hold Shift here, you'll see right here, Toggle Source toggle source program monitor focus. This is important as well as this guy right here. Um, this is source clip close. So this allows me to close a source clip. Now this is why this is important. When I actually start going through this, so let's just grab our first clip here. Let's make sure that we're on our first one. Um, we're gonna start right here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not necessary. We don't even need that particular, um, what you call it? Okay, there we go. So first one right here. This is our first clip that we're going to pick from. I actually don't even know if there's anything usable in this, but just for the sake of argument, we're going to go through it. Okay, so now that we're in our source monitor here, we are going to just pick a random bit of footage. Now on your keyboard, a um, couple more keyboard shortcuts that are very important, is J, K, and L. Um, K is essentially the same thing as using your spacebar, which just basically plays the footage at real time. Um, you can also use L. And what L allows you to do is if I press it one time, it'll play at normal speed. If I press it two times, it'll play two times speed, four times speed, eight times speed, and so on and so forth until it's completely done. So. Let's just fly through here and yeah, there's really nothing too usable here. I mean, maybe this isn't even really totally in focus, but I'll just set my in points using I and my out point using O. Now, after I'm done here, I'm gonna press either period or comma, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that video and audio and it's going to drop it at the beginning of my playhead. Okay, so down here, if you look closely, it's very small because it was only a little tiny bit of footage. We actually have our first clip right there. So now here's where the Shift Z and the Shift X come into play. So if you look up here, I'm gonna touch my mouse right now, but generally speaking, when you're doing this, the name of the game is to go fast. So you wanna touch your mouse as little as possible. So if we look up here into my actual um, viewing window, I have my selects timeline right here, which is actually underlined, which means this is what I'm viewing right now is what is in here in my selects timeline. Now, in order to pull more footage, I need to go back to my source. So normally the only way you could do this is after it switched you from here, you'd go up to here, click into the next window, and then you can proceed. Now, this is the way that I like to do it. So let's just back up. I'm gonna delete this, pretend like that didn't happen. We have our in and out points here, and we're actually in our source monitor. So when I go to drop this down into my timeline, I'll press period again, and it drops it down into my timeline. Now, if you look up in this window again, it switched me back. It brought me to the selects timeline, so I'm no longer in my source window where all my clips are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift Z once, shift Z again, and it'll bring me back to that actual window where my clip is. So now I can go back to here without having to touch my mouse. Now, if I'm done with this clip, what I will do is instead of pressing my U key and going to the next clip, I will actually exit out of this clip by pressing Shift X, and that closes, oh, my bad, that closes that little bit of, or that one clip, I'm sorry. 
So now we're in a new clip. I'll do this again. I'm going to press L to play. We're going to see what happens here. I really honestly have no idea. So let's see. We'll start here just for the sake of argument. I'll press L again. Get it going a little faster. She does her lift. Drops it down. Looks like a hero. Good. Okay. That'll do. So I'm going to press O here to set my out point. I'm going to press period again. And what you're going to notice is it's going to drop it back down into my timeline. Boom. So now I've switched again. So if you look in the upper left hand corner of this window here, you can see it switched me again. So here we go again, shift ZZ brings me back to here and in my source monitor. That way I can keep going on the same clip. If I wish I can use L let's just, I'll press just for the sake of argument again, I'll press I. So I set an endpoint. press L. She does her lift. Boom. Drops it. Good. Okay. So I'm going to press O again. So this is a new clip. I'm going to again press period brought me back in. Oh, I pressed period twice. My bad. Okay. So now I've done that. Now I can press control Z Z again. And here we are. Now, once I'm done with this, our last key again, just to kind of burn it into your brain, shift X, and it will close out that particular clip. That way I don't accidentally go back through it. Okay, so now after this is all done, after I have some footage here that's from whatever camera, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the key M two times, so one, two, and it's gonna bring up this window right here. Now, this is my marker window, and this window is awesome because it basically allows you to organize things to a crazy extent. Um, we're gonna go a little bit into it, but not too, too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come up here into my name and I'm just going to enter what this stuff is. So this was GH5 plus 24 to 105. Um, let's see. 105. And what else was this? Dash barbell club. So barbell club. And that'll do for now. So we have our GH5, which is the camera we were using, 24 to 105, barbell club, B-roll, because that's what this is. And then this was on the date 3-11-2018. So 3-11-2018, okay. So this is my name that I'm gonna use. I have what camera it is, what, um, class this was pertaining to uh, according to my video the fact that it's b-roll this is not an a camera of any kind of testimonial or anything like that um, it's purely action shots and things to cut back and forth from and then the date in which it was shot so that's my tag that's going to go at the very top um, i'm going to give it a random color i really like that aqua guy right there oh this oh this is another thing when you first come into here it's going to say comment marker right here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click chapter marker, but if you accidentally, let's say I click the orange here um, because I want this to show up orange in the top of my timeline. If I now click on chapter marker, it'll reset it back to red for whatever reason. So just make sure that you go back up here and click whatever color it is that you intend to use a second time. So after I'm done with that, I'm going to drag my duration here to just a random amount. It really does not matter. It does not need to be the exact length of all these combined clips. We can adjust that very easily. And what I'm going to do is press OK. And it's going to create this little marker that goes at the top of my timeline here. So now just by looking very carefully or just by zooming in a little bit, I mean, um, we can see exactly what this footage is and what it was or when it was taken. Um, another step that I like to take, um, this is more of just kind of like a finicky thing. You really don't have to do this, but I like to because it keeps things more organized is you can select all of this footage here. That is this type right click. And if we go to label, we can change the color. Now I've used kind of like a seafoam green kind of color, which I'm going to assume is something like uh, teal maybe? No, not quite teal. What would it be? Let's see, not teal. Let's go with Caribbean. Yeah, that's close enough. So now my marker here 
as well as my footage is all the same color. That way when I start stacking this stuff in my dual timeline, I know exactly what footage I'm looking at just based on the color of the clip that I'm seeing. I'll know exactly where it came from. Now in a super long project like this, this is like three hours and something worth of footage here, you kind of end up running out of colors and some of them get a little bit more redundant, um, but still it's better to keep it as separate as possible. That way this stuff is super easy for you to find. Um, and then the last part of this is so after we're done making our selects timeline here, our next step is to actually do our dual timeline select editing, is what I like to call this. Um, I obviously did not invent this. This has been around for a long time. Um, so yeah, it's a great technique. It keeps you organized and this is kind of how I do it. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is just my take on it. So from here, this is my assembly. This is where I usually choose to import this footage, organize it into all my different bins, and then do my actual select editing so that my timeline looks like this. This is all done here in the assembly workspace right here. When I'm done with that, I'll go over to my selects editing. And what I can do here, these are actually opposite of what they should be. What I can do here is now I have my main timeline on the bottom. Of course, you can move it on the top. That's what I usually like to do. I'll end up doing this right here. That way I'm dragging up. Now from here, what I can do is after I choose my music and I know what format I'm gonna use and exactly what I have in mind, I can very quickly kind of uh, pull that vision out of my head just by running down here. I can look at my labels. I can scrub through here and find what clip it is that I want. And then once I have that clip, if I drag it and drop it up to my other time, oh, I'm sorry, I'm grabbing the wrong thing. If I drag it up here into my actual timeline, if you look here, now it hasn't changed anything in my bottom selects timeline. Nothing has changed. So that clip is still there if I want to use it again, or if I decide that this just isn't right and I'm going to delete it, it's still there. It's not going to go anywhere from here. So this is a really quick way to edit. Um, I really prefer this way because it just makes things a lot cleaner and just faster to find things and to navigate through the the sea of footage that you might have for any given project so all right guys well that is pretty much it that's how i edit all of my videos um, i choose to do it this way that way i can set all my in and out points and grab all my selects and put them in a timeline where they're going to be saved and i'm not going to lose anything um, if you do ripple editing um, you can actually well, if you don't know, ripple editing is basically doing sort of the same thing, setting in and out points, dragging it all into your main project timeline, and then shortening them up and getting rid of the parts that you don't want of those clips. And that's an okay way to do it, but you will lose footage that way. Uh, for example, if there's a clip that you end up just not using and you delete it, the in and out points to that clip are gone forever, and you have to go back and set those again in order to use that same footage again when you've already done it once. So this way ensures that you don't have to do that, and it just makes things go smoother, I think. So anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you did, throw me a like, maybe even subscribe. Um, later on this week, I'm going to go over some of the different camera gear that I use um, for filming, wedding, and corporate videos. So. I'll see you then. Bye.